What is going on, party people? Greg Jenkins here from Monkey Pod Marketing, and um, I want to talk about a challenge that um, that you may be experiencing, or that your prospects and customers and the people that you email might be up against. And then I want to offer a potential solution for you. Uh, and this is actually something I have have trained on before. Uh, it's a tactic that I have previously called the single sequence opt out or the single sequence unsubscribe. Um, and this is a video of mine from 2016 where I outlined this tactic. It's got a little over 300 views and it's it's still, you know, it's five years old. It's still getting views today. Um, but the technology has changed just a little bit. So I want to review this and, and maybe update it with some of the new key features. Um, but first, let me describe why this tactic is important and the problem that you might be um, that, that might lead you to reach for something like this. So inside Keep, any contacts you have uh, or any email addresses that you have collected have an email status. That email status tells the system whether or not you can send automated emails to them. So there's confirmed or unconfirmed. Those are both fine. You can email those contacts. And then there's varying versions of, of unsubscribe or, or opt out statuses. And those are ones that we can't email. And um, one of the, the issues is that any automated email from Keep includes an unsubscribe link. Uh, that's, that's just how it works. That's how email marketing works is you have to include an option to let people unsubscribe. Uh, but the problem is that that unsubscribe is binary. So it's either entirely unsubscribed or opted in, right? There's not a whole lot of nuance to that permission, to that marketability. And so what that means is that if our prospects decide they don't want to hear about a specific topic, they don't have a great way of telling us that without unsubscribing completely, right? There's no, there's no easy way for them to say no more messages about this topic or no more messages from this campaign, right? Um, their only option by default is to unsubscribe completely, which would prevent them from receiving communications from us in the future, which they might want. So I want to design for you just a, a quick workaround that you can employ or deploy with your campaigns that would give your prospects, your leads, your subscribers more control over the types of messages that they receive, which ultimately, you know, serves them. Uh, it means they're getting more targeted messages. It creates more engagement for, for you in terms of your messages only going to the people who who, who want them and have raised their hand to, to tell us that. Um, and that in turn improves deliverability over time, right? So all sorts of benefits from this. But here is a very generic campaign. <clears throat> Somebody signs up for info. We have an email series. You know, maybe it's three emails. Maybe it's 10 emails um, promoting whatever this thing is. And maybe it's a purchase but maybe it is, you know, registering for an event or or filling out a, a survey, right? Maybe it's some other call to action. It doesn't need to be a purchase. But the key here is in any of these emails, there's automatically an unsubscribe. And that's fine. Uh, in fact, it's good. We want people to be able to unsubscribe. But what I'm proposing is that we also add an additional piece of text in the bottom of that email that gives them the choice to opt out from just this campaign. So um, if you don't want this type of communication with info about, you know, the offer or the event or, you know, some topic with info about my future webinars, then click here and I won't bug you about that again, okay? Uh, and then you would just manually make that a link. Um, I actually build my own unsubscribe pages, right? So for each topic that I'm letting them opt out of, right, I would build a page specifically about that. The format of the page is really similar. I just clone it each time um, and then give them a suggestion for you know something else they might do. Um, but here is the one that I use for webinars, right? So got it, no more webinar emails. That's my bad, I thought you'd be interested. And then if they have a question, I let them email me. And this actually links to the blog post about this tactic. But um, you could use a generic page that says, hey, message received or, or build your own confirmation process. But the point is we wanna give them an action that they can take that is not the unsubscribe link. So click this link. And then before we close this link that we're creating, 
we want to also apply a tag, right? So this would be my webinar unsubscribe tag, right? And we can put this in my admin category. You can categorize your tags however you see fit, but to me, this is a global designation that this <clears throat> individual doesn't want information about my webinars. And then we click done and insert link. So you could make this, you know, a, a lighter gray if you wanted it to sort of blend in with the other, um, you know, por portions of the footer here. But the idea is that now they can unsubscribe, you can unsubscribe completely, or they have this other option before they globally unsubscribe where they can just opt out of communication about this particular topic. Um, so let's go ahead and jump back out to the campaign level. You would want to, of course, add that same link to any other emails in this campaign, right? Anything else that is about this topic, you would want to give them that option. Um, and then the key here is at the end of the campaign, we need a secondary goal. So of course, this campaign will stop if they buy the thing that we're driving them toward, but we also want those emails to stop if they get the webinar uns unsubscribe tag, right? So this would be our webinar unsubscribe tag. And now what we've done is we've sort of given them um, an eject button, right? A rip cord that they can pull while they are in this email series. And of course, this would work as well if there were, you know, if it was a more complex campaign. So if there was, you know, maybe a link click or an intermediary goal, and then, you know, some sort of additional follow-up. So this could be a much more involved, robust campaign. But if at any point they are in this campaign, whether it's in the email series one or the email series two portion, if at any point they're in this campaign and they get this tag, it's going to extract them from the sequence and pull them out entirely, right? So what this does is it, allows us to craft our follow-up knowing that if people are still in there, they're still thinking about it, right? If they've taken the action either to, to do the thing we want them to do or to pull themselves out, then they're no longer gonna get that messaging. But if they need more time, if they're still thinking about it or they haven't you know, read through the emails, that follow-up can persist, right? So uh, here's an example of, uh, of a campaign of mine that I use to invite people to a webinar. So I add the invite list, um, and then they get the, the invite emails. And then in those invite emails, there is an option for them if they don't wanna hear about those webinars to unsubscribe. So this is that exact campaign I built. But the, the addition that I made is that because I do this in each of my webinar campaigns, um, I also have a filter set up at the beginning so that if somebody has previously unsubscribed from my webinar invites, then they are not added to the uh, invite series and instead they just go to this empty sequence. So um, the, the, if you use this type of behavior, this tactic over time, you can build in filters at the start of any campaign about that topic to make sure people who have previously unsubscribed are not accidentally added and, and therefore aren't receiving information that they have said, you know what, that's not for me. So um, you could also you know, take it a step further and build out a formal email preferences center to let people refine their permissions. But this individual tactic gives your subscribers more control over the type of communication that they are receiving. Um, it's a good practice for us because the more they refine their permissions, the more our messaging becomes more relevant, more targeted because they are not receiving the things that they aren't interested in and they're only receiving the things that they have um, explicitly said, yes, I want more of this, or they have continued to engage with. And, and long-term, that's gonna be good for us, it'll be good for, for them, and, and it'll overall improve the relationship we have with our audience and the performance of our, of our email deliverability at large. The last thing I will add here is, if this was a tag that you wanted to be able to apply again, then you could remove it once it has been, um, once it has done its job, once it has pulled them out, right? So uh, in this scenario, like if somebody's unsubscribing from my webinars, I probably would leave that tag on them so that in the future I could use it as a filter, right? Um, but if you wanted to, let's say, you know, let somebody opt out of a specific promo campaign because it's not a good fit for them right then, but you wanted them to be able to sign up again in the future and wanted to have that option like available 
for them to you know opt out a second time if they needed what you could do is add a process here that automatically removes that tag so uh, this is again it's my webinar and subscribe tag but this would be like your individual campaign opt-out tag um, and then once you have removed that uh, I would just use this uh, add to sequence widget to actually pull them out of that sequence um, so that you don't have leftover contacts kind of unnecessarily queued in that sequence. So this is just like a housekeeping uh, kind of sequence to make sure that that tag is removed and then the contact is um, uh, re extracted from the campaign entirely. And what that would do is it would sort of reset this, this function so that the next time they came through, if they wanted to opt out of that experience again, they could. Again, totally not necessary, but in situations where you need this to be available more than once, a contact can't have that tag reapplied if they have already uh, received it in the past, unless it has first been removed. So that's one more thing for you to think about. Uh, guys, thank you for hanging out with me. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. If you did find this valuable, feel free to give me a thumbs up or subscribe or just share the video with somebody who it can serve. And if you would like more on the campaign builder in general, if you know that this tool is powerful, but you could be getting more out of it, um, I recommend unlocking my CB Trilogy course. You can do that at cbtrilogy.com. This was a paid offering from MonkeyPod, but it is now available to all Keep users free of charge thanks to a partnership with uh, Keep. Shout out to Uncle Scott and Uncle Clayt on that one. Um, that's it, friends. Thanks for watching.